Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Harvey Began Center's Family First, Arts from a Distance. For this workshop, we will take inspiration from the colorful, vibrant patterns of Mickalean Thomas and making our own homemade puzzles with teaching artist Kim Turner. Let's get started. We hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to today's Family First Workshop with the Harvey B. Gantt Center for African American Art and Culture. I'm Kim and I will be your teaching artist for today. Now, remember today we're going to be creating puzzles and we're going to be using Micheline Thomas as our inspiration. So let's talk a little bit about Micheline Thomas. She is a contemporary African-American visual artist who's known for her work that focuses on the beauty and the power of women. Now, Micheline uses painting, she does installation, she uses photography, and also collage. So today you can keep all of that in mind as you're creating your own puzzle. Just a couple things housekeeping wise. If any time during the workshop you have a question, go ahead and go to the chat box and type in your question and I will be sure to be watching so that I can answer the questions. It's also good for you to know that at the end of this workshop, you will be able to share your work if you like. Just make sure near the end, we'll let you know when you can raise your hand in the chat if you wanna share. All right, let's make sure you have all your supplies and let's get started. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Here is the picture that I created for the puzzle. It's actually, I did collage. Taking it back to Micheline Thomas, I drew on that plain sheet of white paper, and then I cut out some different things for collage. So go ahead and make sure you have all your materials, and we're going to go ahead and get started with our white sheet of paper. So just note that when you, at the end, if you want to show your work, it will be in that form. It won't be in the puzzle form yet because we need to give it time to dry. So I am going to show you how to draw the puzzle pieces, but uh, we're not going to cut it today. You can cut it maybe after about an hour of drying. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead I want to go ahead and draw another face. So go ahead and decide how you want your picture. You can start the collage first if you'd like. Um, the reason I'm doing it on white paper and not directly on top of the cardboard is because 
I am drawing, uh, if I were just maybe pasting, I might do it directly on the cardboard, which you could feel free to do if you're only pasting um, different pieces that you've cut out. But if I'm gonna draw, I wanna do it on the paper first. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a face. That's what I'm gonna do. So go ahead and get started on whatever you're going to draw. I don't think I want it to look exactly like the other one, but. So I'm just going to go ahead and start drawing what it is I want to do. Uh, you might want to do a face, a building, whatever it is that you feel free to do right now, go ahead and do that. So if you notice in Micheline Thomas's work, you'll see that she likes to use a good amount of color. Um, and if you notice in my painting that you may have seen before this, I don't really do a lot of eyes, so I think I'm just going to do some lips for mine. And I'm not going to do eyes because I think I might cut things out for eyes or just not have any. So go ahead and continue whatever it is you're going to draw. And remember, if you're looking at Micheline Thomas's work, she uses pattern and color. So on your puzzle, you may want to do a lot of pattern and, and color too. Um, you may want to use a lot of different colors or just keep them in the same family. I'm going to go ahead and go in with these three. So as we're working, we're all working together. Just know I'll be talking throughout as we're working and there'll be moments that I may not be talking as much. But that's a beautiful time, any time during this workshop, for you to go ahead and put your questions in that you may have into the chat box, as I told you earlier. So I'm going ahead and going in, and what I just decided is that I think I want to make a pattern on her face, but with actual drawing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm really excited to see at the end what you all are doing or have done. Um, and how you're making this kind of your own, this concept of using the style of Micheline Thomas, but then making it your own. Now, another thing you may want to note as you're doing your puzzle, especially if you're working with little ones, uh, go ahead and think about how big do you want your puzzle pieces to be? And of course, while we're drawing them later, I'll talk more about it. But in talking about it now, you think if you have younger age students doing this, younger age children doing this, then you may want to have larger puzzle pieces and fewer, uh, especially if they're four or under. You might want to have fewer pieces if they're going to be putting that puzzle together. Uh, you might want to think if you do smaller puzzle pieces when we're making them, that means you'll create more puzzle pieces, right? You're not going to probably have a hundred piece puzzle, but you'll have more pieces. So all of those things are, are things to think about as you're working on what you want to do for your puzzle to make it your own. Another beautiful thing, if you're just doing one way today, is you can always do this activity. Maybe today you're using paper and magazine cutouts. Maybe another day you're using photographs. So creating puzzles is, there are really a lot of variations that you can do depending on what it is you want to see out of your puzzle and how you want your puzzle to look. So I'm just using my Sharpies right now. And I'm also going to use some markers that I have, regular markers, which I think I just wanted to use a few of these colors. And I'm just coloring the way that I want the picture to be before I start doing the collage. And then I might actually play one off of the other and start doing them sort of at the same time so I can see how I want my end result. Okay. 
and just remember as you're doing this, you're sort of making your own interpretation of Micheline Thomas's work. Her style, but in your way. And um, when you're finished with the puzzles, a way to store them is to put them in Ziploc baggies so they can stay a bit fresher. So you see, I'm getting, I'm really getting in here with color. I don't know that this was my first plan, but it's my plan now. It's what's, it's what's happening. So I'm gonna go in here and keep continuing with more color. And I believe what I'm going to do is make the background more pattern. I may change my mind and put pattern on her face, but for now, I think I'm just gonna stick with the color. And that's the thing about creating these pieces is you can do them however you want. It's really up to you. There are no rules. There's no one way to do it. It's just however you want it to look and however you want to do it to create that sort of effect that you want to create. That is the beauty of art. All right, how are y'all doing so far? Hopefully everyone's doing well. Starting to figure out kind of how you want your piece to come together. I believe I'm figuring mine out right now as I work. I'm gonna cut that off. So, so as you see, I'm going, I'm going ahead and just putting a lot of color into this. And I don't really know what's gonna happen at the top. So, I'm move my arm for you. Personally, using markers and sharpies. You can also use paint. Um, I wouldn't necessarily suggest crayon um, because of the glue afterwards gluing it. If you're using liquid glue, now if you're using a glue stick, crayon would be okay. But I think the way that marker holds is is better. Now some of you, as far as uh, for the list of supplies, a glue stick is better just because of the way that the glue stick sort of comes out. It's not loose like the glue. It's not as wet as the other glue. However, that is the glue that I have today. I wanted to show you that it can be done with liquid glue as well, just very carefully. And that's also why you have a paper towel to make sure that you could clean up any mess that might be created. All right. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do now is start, go ahead and start cutting this out. Um, well, I will say what I did, and you may want to take this suggestion, for uh, people who are drawing and then they're going to paste it onto the cardboard, if you're drawing on the white paper. I went back ahead and got pretty bold with my black lines on purpose. One, so that I don't accidentally cut into what I've colored, and two, just so it could stand out a little bit more. So I'm actually using a black Sharpie. So I'm just gonna go back in to the lines that I want. Oh, the, other one. the 
the lines that I want to be heavier or darker and that I want to not accidentally cut the beautiful bright colors while I'm cutting on the line. So basically I'm going back and outlining and then I can also clean up a little bit maybe some of the areas with the black. making this much wider so I can cut the outside. So you see how that's starting to get darker now? So that's just a suggestion for you. I'm going to turn this. That's just a suggestion for you if you don't want to accidentally cut the beautiful color that you've done on the inside and you want to just stay on the black lines. Just make them a little bolder so if you cut a little bit of the black it's no big deal. I'm not sure what I did there, but here we are. And now you see, I'm actually gonna add a black line here. Now you see there's a few things I might wanna clean up, but now you see how bold that black line is. So again, like I said earlier, I'll be talking throughout. Feel free to play music while you're working or, you know, also you can listen to what I may be saying or you can just focus on your work. Also, don't forget that if you have questions, go ahead and put them in a chat box and I will be sure that I will get to those questions and answer them for you. All right. So now, my next step, after I outline her lips a bit more, is going to be to go ahead and cut this out because this, for me, I believe is the only drawing paper I'm going to use or white paper I'm going to use. I think the rest I'm going to use from the items that I cut out to create the background. All right. See there? I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. And what I was saying before about the lines, the reason I made them thicker is because I already know myself and I need, I like lines a little thicker so that I don't cut the inside. So this gives me leeway to make sure if I'm cutting off some of the black, no problem. So go ahead if you're finished drawing. Cut out what it is that you drew. If you happen to still be looking through your, um, maybe your magazines or pieces of pattern or colored paper, deciding which ones to use, go ahead and do that. Keep doing whatever stage you're on right now, just keep working. Keep doing you. Now realize. I think I want to add this black here so I can cut it. And so really just let yourself flow and just let yourself feel, do what you feel is sort of going to look the way that you want it to look. And you know we're going to try, might try some different things until we get exactly what we want. So we've got that. Now what I'm going to do is take my piece of cardboard and take some of the clippings that I have. Here's my piece of cardboard. And the other thing is if you don't fill the whole piece of cardboard up, it's fine. You get scissors and go ahead and cut it off. Now we're actually going to glue on the side with the words just so when we draw our puzzle pieces, it's clear. So I'm gonna set that down here. And I'm currently make, making sure I have all of my clippings that I want. And before I glue anything, I'm going to go ahead and see that I place things the way that I want them, right? Just like I did on my first one. So, I got, the, I have this clipping. I just like the colors in it. 
so we can have some more colors that pop. And I have this piece of uh, sort of thick paper that has an iridescence to it. So I'm going to start deciding where I want my pieces to go and start cutting them the way I want them. And you can cut them at any angles, at any shape that you want. Change your mind, switch them around. Okay, I'm gonna, I think I want this to go here. So right now all you're doing is deciding how you want things to be placed on your, um, the back part of your puzzle. You could be thinking you want the colors clashing or coordinating. It's up to you. I think I'm going to switch these. I think I want this here. And I'm going to hang some of it off and then cut it later. So we're just placing things as we want them. There we go. I think I want to do this. Again, you hear the word I said think because I'm not positive yet. And that's okay. just want to keep building and I think I want to create some different um, shapes even and I, I think I might want to put this person's face in the middle I'm not sure might be interesting and you know you're thinking of what's visually interesting to you what you feel like is going to be cool as a photo and then remember you're going to cut it apart and it's going to be a puzzle so that's kind of the cooler part. You know what? I think I like the city here. So this is apparently Philadelphia. I think I'm going to put part of Philly in the background. doing yours in a sort of collage way like I'm doing then you know you might be thinking it's all about how you want the layering to be. I'm going to cover that up. Okay. So I have the feel of like the city but then the outdoors as well. And so like these are like little leaves. I'm going to go in and I kind of I mean um well, maybe it looks like cabbage or something, but I'm gonna go ahead and go in and cut around. Use the shapes maybe in the pictures that already exist. And then also you can create your own when cutting. For me, there's going to be a good amount of adjusting because I just want to get it exactly how I want it and overlapping, adjusting and overlapping. And if 
you're working with, you have younger children doing this and their fine motor skills obviously aren't quite as good as yours when cutting, then you can have already cut some pieces out for them so they can already place them or you can do it with them now. finish with this part cutting and then I want to start gluing but I need your nick to be stale on here okay I'm going to do one more block of color and then basically I'm going to start gluing and then at the end I'll see what may be missing what I want to add okay so so far we're kind of going to have this but now I'm gonna start taking it all apart, remembering where it is, and gluing it. So in order for me to remember where it is, I'm going to turn my paper this way to help myself glue. And I'm going to put, save that just in case. I'm going to put the papers in the area that they would go on my paper. So this goes in this corner. I'm gonna set it here so that I can remember. This goes here. I'm going to set it here. Put this in that corner this and that corner. So now I've separated everything the way I want it. I know this is going in the middle. Now remember you're going to start gluing on the side that has whatever it is that's on the cardboard, the markings. You want to have the you want to have the plain cardboard on the other side so that drawing is much easier. Now like I said I'm using um, liquid glue because that's what I have. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and glue down is my cityscape. And I'm going to glue it not all on the edge because of the way I want it to stick. So go ahead and start gluing your pieces. If you're using liquid glue, then you're going to have to go ahead and get your fingers and use them. That's why you have that paper towel to help you spread that glue. You don't want to over glue, but you do want to make sure that it's covered because remember, you're going to be cutting this into pieces. And so you want to make sure that every part has glue on it. So the edges or the new edges that you're going to be creating when cutting the puzzle pieces don't start peeling back because there is no glue. So I will explain that more when we get to the drawing part of our puzzle pieces. Okay, so I went ahead and put a lot of glue on here, and I'm just going to start spreading it. If you have a glue stick, this may be much easier because you just whoosh, go ahead and roll it over. But again, sometimes glue sticks uh, don't seem to hold as well sometimes if you don't use enough. So make sure that you're using enough glue. Oh, I didn't need to put that at the top enough glue so that you've got everything you need. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place this where I want it and glue it down. And I forgot that I didn't want to use the top, but since I accidentally put glue on it, I need to cut that off immediately so I don't start sticking to things. And then you're just going to continue gluing everything. Now if you look at Micheline Thomas's work, you'll see how she really uh, seamlessly sort of puts things together. And even though it's a collage and you can sort of tell, it just is very smooth the way that her work is together and the colors pop. Okay, so I'm just going to keep gluing. I think I'm maybe this side first. Now I'm gluing this. I'm going to put a little glue on here. Only because I'm not sure I want this to start. Okay, I'm trying to get my bearings. So there we go. Okay. And 
again, I keep sort of testing to make sure that I'm like, do I want this here or no? So I'm doing some tests as I go, setting things down and deciding if I want to change my mind or keep it the way I originally had it. Can't wait to see what you all create. I'm really excited for the end product. Well, the almost end, because remember, we're not cutting it yet. So the almost end product. I can't wait to see. But hopefully you're also enjoying the process because process is wonderful. Um, really thinking about how things come together in your mind, how you change your mind. Process is really wonderful thing. Okay. So you see I got some city, I got some um, trees as well. I like the mix. And then I'm going to put this here just for some added texture. So yes, I still want this here. So what am I going to do? Go ahead and glue it down. sure you got that paper towel because I for one I'm over here making a mess on my hands which glue mess is beautiful mess as long as you get it cleaned off all right and I believe I'm gonna put this one here yep I might want it this way so you see how it's coming together my vision is evolving a little bit and I'm um, deciding to do a, some things a little differently than maybe I would have at first. And that is just perfect. Now, since this is a little bit thicker than regular paper, I'm making sure that I definitely get enough glue on here and it will not peel up. Nothing worse on a puzzle than when it's peeling and then you have to get rid of it if you can't fix it. These puzzles really, as we said before, are for, you can do this for any ages. I mean, obviously the little children, you're gonna to have to help a little bit more, but the fun part is then them being able to put them together and at the same time saying they created their own puzzle to then put together and take apart numerous times. So that's kind of the really cool part about it. Okay. Yeah, this is a little tougher to stick. So anything a little tougher to stick, which might be like photographs, if you're using those, or sort of a thicker paper, go ahead and put a little bit extra pressure on it. When you are gluing it. Then I'm aware I've got some pieces that need to be filled in. Ooh, I like that silver there. I think I'm going to use some more of this and put it here. Let's see what I can actually cut what's left. want the 
those words in it. So I had to figure out how to position it so that we don't see the words. There we go. We'll do that. And then we'll put some silver up here. Okay. So as you see, I'm, I'm doing it so that I'm using some, some of the similar pieces repeatedly. That's just what I'm doing. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it, but I'm using them repeatedly so that I can bring some cohesion to it. And especially since this is so bright and colorful, I want to use other ways to bring the whole picture together. And that's some uniformity in pattern. Okay, now I've forgotten how I put this. <laughs> no? All right, you see, I might have to play around with it like I'm doing because I really forgot how I had this. But we're going to do it this way. I think it was something like this. Okay. Then, as you see, I need more silver here. So you don't want to see any of the cardboard coming through. You want to make sure that you're covering all of that up. So as I'm finding ways to do that, since I um, still have some empty spaces, then that's what I'm going to do is cover it up. Well, this one is having a difficult time. As I'm gluing some of this, it's hanging off the paper. That's because I know I'm going to, at the end, go through and cut off all those edges I don't want. All right. And the last, I'm going to go ahead and put the face, the face on. I wanted to cover the top of her head some. All right, so we are almost getting to the part where we're going to have to draw the puzzle pieces. All right. dropping things. Okay. And the way I want to position this is make sure I cover those words up, but I want to see the buildings. There we go. Now, if you do like what I did, which I would really want more blue right here, I didn't color it in quite enough. Once it dries and before you cut out the actual puzzle pieces, you go ahead and go back in with more color. Just make sure that it's dry first so your paper doesn't rip or it doesn't have a funny look to it. Okay. So go ahead and get my paper towel. Get ready, finish up all that you're gluing right now. I'm gonna grab my paper towel, let me jump. Then we're gonna start cutting. Only the edges, if you have edges like I do, that are hanging off. We're not gonna cut anything else yet. So because I have these edges hanging off that I don't want, I'm just going to turn my paper over, you see that? And cut the edges. gotten all my edges cut off and you've gotten yours cut off if you are like me and 
had some pieces hanging over. Then uh, you can go ahead, make sure there's no glue on the front that's not like wiped off. Don't make make sure you don't have any like edges of leaking glue. I'm just gonna run a straight towel over it. Make sure nothing's there that I don't want in the glue, glue-wise. Okay, and there we go. That's how she looks. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and start drawing the puzzle pieces. Now remember what I was saying, go ahead and flip it over. And I'm just gonna demonstrate first, actually, maybe let yours dry for about a minute or so. But I'm not gonna wait for a minute. And I'm just going to show you um, how I wanna make the puzzle pieces. So I'm gonna make mine with not a lot of puzzle pieces, maybe about eight to 10. So you're just going to decide where you want to start and go ahead and start drawing. I would suggest making some with kind of a loop, which I'm about to do, like a loop, like a puzzle piece. Okay, so you see there's one puzzle piece right there. See how it looks like a puzzle piece where when you get the other piece, you put it together? Now, if you don't want to make yours so sort of complex, you don't have to, but I want mine to sort of be this way. So then you just keep going and creating more puzzle pieces. Um, and if you think you make a mistake, I don't really think you can actually make a mistake because when you're cutting it, you can change it around if you'd like. But also, not only when you're cutting it, you can change it around, but you can just decide exactly how you want your shapes. There's no one size fits all. There's no one way. I'm just doing mine a certain way that I want it. Oops, so that one is crooked. So what I'm going to do, straighten it out and know that I'm going to cut the thicker line that I made. So making a mistake is fine. You just go back in and change it. So now this puzzle piece is going to be pretty big. Do I want it big or do I want to make it two? I'm going to make it big. It's going to go from here to here. and it has a weird angle at it, and that's okay. So basically, you're just gonna keep drawing until you've finished all your puzzle pieces. And then, you're finished. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that one. I just made a really awkward one, but that's okay. going to be right up against each other and then trying to figure out how I want the last one the last two I'm gonna make them two there you go all right so there's our front part and there's our back part Give it about an hour or so, and then you will be able to go ahead and cut your puzzle pieces. But for now, if you're ready, then go ahead in the chat and raise your hand. I'd love to see what a lot of you created. So let's go ahead and see. Who's going to be raising their hand? Who's ready? OK, great. I see a few people. Awesome. All right. Let's see who's ready to show your work. Anyone in the comments raising their hands for us?
Uh, hi, Kimberly Thomas Hogan. Oh, that's awesome. Amazing. Looks like you use a lot of blue coloring. Nice. That's awesome. Wow. Uh, I really like how you use the people on the bottom. That's cool. Thank nice. You. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kimberly. Is there anyone else who's going to share? Look at that. Is that Ariel? Ariel? Oh, wait. Hold it up again. Yes. Awesome. Look at all that color, just like we talked about Micheline Thomas uses. Amazing. Thank you. Hi. Thank all right. You. You're welcome. Thank you. The Jones family. Hello. Look at that. Look at all that color. Hi. How are you? Look at all that color. That's awesome. Put it, push it up a little closer so I can see a little bit closer. Yes. Nice, nice job. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, two. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Three, <laughs> four. All right, you all did it. Awesome. And I'm, I like the way they're all different too. Like you all did your own thing. That's awesome. Okay, we have K and C. Can you hold yours up for us to see it? Ooh, look at that. All right. Nice. Look at those colors that you use. Uh, uh, I'm cutting it out so that it can be a puzzle already. Oh, so it can be a puzzle already? Yeah. I'm okay, okay. It a puzzle so I already cut it out, but not all of it out. I didn't Got you. Right, you look sleepy. Thank you for sharing. All right. Good. Okay. We have, oh, we had Brittany. Wait a minute. Brittany, I saw that. That was awesome. I saw your cuttings. And now we have Trisha. Wow. You got two of them. Both of you did it. Awesome. Thank you so much. I see the way you use different colors and the way you, one of you chose different faces. Thank you. Tell me again. Tell her again. Thanks. Oh, thank you. a lot of collages. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. I guess I'm sorry, y'all. My face is here now. <laughs> what, baby? Trisha. Mm -hmm. Brittany, can you show yours again? Brittany, show yours again after Orlando. Thank you, Orlando. Let's see. Let's see, Orlando. Nice. Oh, you got two. Oh, you're going to put that on there? Dope. Thank you. Ah, thank you, Brittany. Nice. I'm thank hungry. You. Right, I think I need a <laughs> And we'll cut it out. Okay. <laughs> Let's put it back together again. Thank you, you. Let's just go and break down. Okay, she said to let it dry a little bit, sweetie. Why don't you finish your snack? Yeah. Uh, here, try this. So, is there ice cream? Put it on the carpet. I'll try. Okay, anyone else? Thanks, Brittany. <laughs> it makes a squeaky noise. Okay, anyone else want to share? I'm really enjoying all the, the different ways that you all use the same directions to create really <laughs> wonderful different pieces of art. I hope you're going to hang them on the wall. Anyone else? Any last takers? Okay, put my glasses on. Dinky Wright. I, I'm not seeing you yet. Can I see yours? Hold on me. I think I need to scroll over. Okay, Dinky Wright. And then I'm going to come back to yours, Malia. Keep yours up, Malia. Okay, Dinky Wright. Hey, I see yours. And I see yours, Malia. And I think it's amazing how both of you use so much color. Look at that. 
Awesome. Nice. Y'all really did the color thing today. I am very happy to see that. Hi, Dinky. Okay, Thank is there you. anyone Thank else? You. I'm trying to scroll and see. Yanni? Oh, look at that. Wow. Can you put that just a little bit closer so I can see a little bit more? Nice. Wow, you really did go there with the color. That's amazing. Good job. Oh. Thank you all so much. You really did awesome work. Is there anyone else before we... Trying to make sure I can see them. Hey there, we're we're sharing our video, but we don't see it. Okay, hold on. We're, I'm trying to find you. What's your name? My name is Isaac Joseph. Okay. Um, can someone help me out? I'm not seeing that. Oh, you, yeah, there you go. Um, on your Zoom on the bottom, did you already put the start video where the video recorder is on the bottom, Isaac? The Isaac Joseph? Yes, we did. I'm, I'm you right did. here. did. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm still looking. And your name is going to pop up as Isaac Joseph? No, it'll come up as Mikaela McDade. Oh, okay. Hold on, let me Sorry, find you. I see you, Mikaela. Okay. There it's we go. Right now. Mikael. There you go. We, Got it. Okay. Um, we were actually in another art class right before we joined you guys, and so these are some of the things that we drew today. Oh, nice. So, to put in so we're still working. Okay. Well, I think that you have a wonderful start. And I encourage you to keep going. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, we're still working. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I they said you. you. They wrote a good note. They said, I thank see you again. Good job. Have fun. It's the ordinary thing. Okay, is there anyone else? <laughs> Jen, Jen, are you, there you are. Okay, Jen. Can someone bring Jen closer? Ooh, let's yeah, show us both of them. <laughs> wow, those are nice. Look at that. Buildings and a face. Oh, you all did such a wonderful job today. Thank you for sharing, Jen. Yes, architecture. You're right. I'm reading comments, too. Okay, anyone else? All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. I'm really happy to see all of the, I know it was kind of a short time, but I see that you all did such a wonderful job in our short time together. And I'm so excited. I hope that your photos see a wall or a desk and not the garbage can. So keep them because you've, you've really done a wonderful job. Thank you so much for joining us and keep doing art. Yes, that someone put in the comments. There will be more, there will definitely be more um, workshops. Thank you. So keep, keep, keep
keep um, looking at the Gantt Center website for different days for different workshops, and you will be able to participate in those as well. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you again for joining me today for this Family First workshop. And let's remember to continue to support the Gantt Center. You can go ahead and go to the website to do so. And you can also learn about the new offerings that you can continue to take advantage of virtually. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining Family First, Arts from a Distance. We hope you enjoyed this afternoon's program. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Harvey Began Center's official YouTube page for updates on future workshops and other programs. To continue the free programs that highlight some of the best in Black arts and culture, please consider supporting the Gantt Center via our Text to Give platform by texting UNMASKED to 345-345. You help further our mission. All contributions matter and truly make a difference. Visit our website, GantCenter.org, to see all of our upcoming programs.